All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, we are gonna talk about why our fig trees are not forming figs. And this is a very different topic than if our fig trees did form the figs and then the figs dropped off. And this is also a very different topic than if our trees just didn't ripen in time. The fruits on the trees formed and didn't ripen within the length of our season. Those are two very different topics. If you guys recall in the last video that we did, we talked about the main crop and how the main crop forms. That's the crop that we're gonna be focusing on in this video, is the crop that forms on this new growth. And this is typically the crop that we all want, we all desire, it's usually the tastiest. And this is the, the reason really why we grow figs. Um, in that video, I actually mentioned to you guys how the figs form. We talked about a little bit about pinching and kind of squeezing the fruits in in our season before frost. And then I also mentioned actually in that video three reasons why or three things that we need to have the fruits form along the branches. So I figured I'd do it on its own separate video because I get this question, guys, so often. This is probably over the length of time that I've been making the videos for you guys on YouTube. This is the most common fig question I get. Why do my figs just not form? You know, I have a tree in X location for X amount of years and it's massive. Why does it not form figs? Well, we're gonna, you're gonna find out in this particular video. And unfortunately, I do wanna start off one, with a little bit of bad news in that just some, in some cases here, guys, cause I've selected out of the 120, 130 or whatever potted fig trees I have here on the patio, I have chosen about seven or eight that have not shown fruit buds at this point or have not shown figs along the new branches. So I've carefully selected these to give them a little bit of special attention to show you guys a little bit of a couple reasons why some of these haven't fruited. And we're gonna give them a little bit of TLC, but even after doing all of this TLC and maybe after a couple weeks, I start seeing some positive results with these specific trees. There are just specific instances, guys, where you might be in a particular instance like that where it's just not your year. You know, that's the bad news is that sometimes the trees just need to be get a little bit older. Sometimes they're a little bit too young. I know fig trees, they can fruit at very young ages. They're very precocious. I've had so many fig trees, so many different varieties fruit, even in year one or even from cutting, you know? So it's not unheard of, but sometimes guys, like this particular tree right here, it's called Chico Strawberry. And I just think for whatever reason this year, it's just not its year. It's just something that we're gonna have to wait till next year to get this hopefully sorted out and sometimes this just happens, right? We're lucky with figs in that way that they can fruit at such a young age, whereas other trees, guys, they may take three or four or five years. My pawpaw tree took seven years before it fruited. Persimmons, they take seven years typically before they stop dropping their persimmons. You know, just as an example, these cherry trees in the background, they take two or three years to even form the fruit buds on the branches. So, you know, this stuff takes some time, but one of the big things that I really recommend to you guys is just to improve the overall health of your tree. And a lot of that unfortunately has to do with fig mosaic virus. It can really be a detriment to these trees. And you can visibly see that there on the new, the new growth here, or even on some of the older leaves that look a bit mottled, discolored. They look even maybe deformed. So this tree here, although it is actually forming fruit buds in here, you can see that along the branch, right there where the leaf stem attaches to the main trunk is two different distinct dots. So one of those dots is a new branch, one of them is a new fruit, but this tree has really taken its time to get its act together because of this virus. And I often recommend to you guys actually to do something called rejuvenation pruning, which is kind of just cutting out the unhealthy growth. So if there is something that looks really, really unhealthy, it might be a good idea, even during the growing season, to cut it out. And I had some trees actually where I've done some rejuvenation pruning where I actually take the tree and I cut it all the way down to almost nothing. And I know that's extreme and sometimes in really severe situations where your tree is not very healthy, this is probably not a good idea. You can kill your tree but I've cut them back and right around now I would do it. And then later in the season, they re-sprout 
and then later in the season they come back so strong and so healthy and then the following season they fruit. And sometimes that's all it is, it's just shaking or kind of lessening the hindrance of the fig mosaic virus. Uh, some other situations that you might have to actually improve the health of your tree is, well, maybe you should get yourself a greener thumb, right? I know that's a big topic and obviously if everyone can get a greener thumb, I'm sure you would, you would choose to have a greener thumb, right? But a lot of it's about the soil and a lot of it's about the water. And the other big thing I wanna recommend to you guys is to try to increase the soil microbes in your soil, to have a healthier soil in general. And one of the things that I'm doing actually, I've been really into this this year, is making compost tea. And I have myself some brewing right now. It's been going for about a day. And all you need is an air pump and a mesh bag. And something, of course, to house it in. And this water basically, it gets pumped up from the bottom, from the air, the air pump that I have. And over the mesh bag, it kind of strips away the, from the power of the air and the, and the water that's coming up from the bottom, it strips away some of the microbes from the soil that I put into this mesh bag. So if you have worm castings or compost or really healthy soil, put that in the bag, throw in some comfrey, throw in some weeds, and all that stuff gets extracted, a lot of the nutrients, the minerals, and of course the microbes get stripped away from the soil. So with the help of those microbes, guys, it just really makes all of the soil nutrients, the macronutrients, the micronutrients, way more available to our plants. And it, the trees just almost seems like they shake off or the virus itself is it just at such a lesser degree of being a hindrance. And the trees just perform so much more beautifully. They grow better, they fruit easier. Um, and sometimes this can obviously happen with time, but Really, compost tea is such a great recommendation. I highly recommend you guys try it. Um, the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is actually the heat. So I know this doesn't really apply to most of us as right now it's actually 91 degrees Fahrenheit here in the Philadelphia area, but maybe some of you guys have a kind of a mild summer and it would be really critical for those of us in the UK, the Pacific Northwest, maybe San Francisco, you know, areas that really are quite mild in the summer, or at least we're almost in the summer, to have a little bit of extra heat because we really do need those soil temperatures to increase the metabolisms of our trees. Um, I don't know exactly what temperature we need, but certainly 78 degrees Fahrenheit is the optimal temperature for our fig trees to operate at, right? Just like us as humans, we have a temperature that we like to operate at. And if we're too cold, we start to shiver. If we're too warm, then we start to sweat, right? The fig tree though is kind of at our mercy and it just has to deal with wherever we're at. And if you can get them a little bit of extra soil temperatures, it can, it can certainly help. It's not gonna hurt the tree. Um, so certainly if you can have the right metabolism for your tree, it's just gonna be better at certainly uptaking water, nutrients, performing the way that it should. And I know that's probably just a very narrow thing there that people you guys have, some of you guys have to worry about, but the majority of us probably not. But it has to be said. The next thing is actually the light, and this is definitely the most important. So the light is what really dictates whether or not the fruit buds will form along these branches. So along these new branches, every variety is different, but every variety requires a certain level of light, a certain amount of intensity of light, and a duration of light. And everybody watching right now has a different level of intensity of light and duration of light. But all these varieties require something a little bit different. So I can't give you guys a, just a general rule of thumb and apply it to everybody, but certainly giving them as much light as possible is the way to go. Now, it would be nice if you could just take your tree like I have some of these potted trees and move them somewhere where it gets a little bit more light. Um, but not all of us are that lucky and really my recommendation is not that. My recommendation is that we come in here very closely to our trees and we look at the form because the form is really what's gonna dictate how much light the tree gets. If you can imagine this tree here, we have one shoot that's coming up right here in the middle and then I have four fruiting branches around it. And this branch right here you can see is really close to this other branch. This is just not enough light that these two branches are receiving. So what I need to do actually is open this up get myself a stake 
or even prune out maybe this growth here in the center so that I put this now, this branch on an angle. This is allowing the light to come into the center of the tree that not only this branch is gonna get more light, but also the middle of the tree is. So you can see actually right here what I've done is that, that exact thing. I've got myself a stake and this branch is now more on a horizontal angle to catch the sunlight that it needs to set those fruit buds. So things like staking and pruning, thinning, you know, doing the, the deed that you guys need to do to have the right form, it goes such a long way with these trees. So those are the three main things. Um, we talked about heat, sunlight, and just having a greener thumb, having a better health to our trees. Uh, now there is one situation I think that is worth mentioning that if you guys are gonna do really hard pruning, I wanna show you some of the in-ground trees really quickly. If you do very hard pruning in the winter time, it's possible that you're basically setting your tree up for failure every year. And that it's not impossible, if you do the three things I mentioned, it's not impossible to get fruit after doing a hard pruning like that. But typically what happens if the cold kills our trees or if we do a really hard pruning ourselves, maybe we cut the tree back to almost nothing, the tree will then respond the following year by growing these very healthy and vigorous water shoots is kind of like what I like to call them. The, the trees and the branches revert back to almost a, a state of infancy. The branches become juvenile and they just don't fruit. They love to grow and grow and grow. And that's the natural response really for any of the fruit trees, guys, not just the figs. But as an example over here on my cherry trees, I did some summer pruning. This pruning in the summer is going to encourage fruit buds. But if I were to do pruning actually in the winter, it encourages the tree to grow. There's a difference in what the hormones do depending on when you actually prune the tree. So that's a big one. I think a lot of people overlook it and uh, it's just not something that's recommended. If you're really struggling to get your tree to fruit, I probably would not hard prune it like that. I would prune it, but focusing on getting more light into the tree, opening up the center of your bush or the tree that you have. You know, uh, but if you're gonna cut the tree back to like three to four feet every year, that can work. It's just a little bit more difficult in most seasons to get that tree to fruit. So those are a lot of the reasons, really all of the reasons that I know of, the many years of experience I have now with the figs guys, of why your fig tree isn't fruiting. And I highly recommend that over the next two weeks, that's what I'm gonna be doing. I hope that you guys do that. And then hopefully I'll start to see some fruit buds form here on the branches after making some changes. And then by the end of the season, we should get some ripe fruit off of these seven or eight trees here that we're looking at. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Check out our blog, figboss.com. We'll see you guys for the next one. Take care.